In the past year, I've landed offers at companies like Amazon and Google, and I've also helped thousands of people land their dream offer in AI engineering. In this video, I'll be going over 10 different interview questions that you've got to prepare for, plus my recommended answers for each one. The questions are going to build on each other, so I recommend going through them one by one. Also, just a disclaimer, this video is by no means comprehensive, because there are an infinite number of questions that you could be asked. Instead, I'll be going over just a few of the most important questions. So listen closely because you could be asked these in your next interview. This question tests whether you can think at scale and understand data engineering bottlenecks. When one of my students interviewed at Amazon, they got hit with this exact question during a system design round, and they almost slipped into small dataset mode. Don't make that mistake. Real world AI is 90% about dealing with tons of messy data before you even get to the model. Here's my recommended high level answer. Use distributed frameworks like Spark or Ray. Break the data into manageable chunks using a distributed file system, and also apply streaming or batch processing pipelines depending on latency needs. The important thing in your answer is that you emphasize distributed. No single machine can handle this. Also, pipeline efficiency and fault tolerance matter at this scale. And do not say that you'll just load the data into pandas and process it row by row. This question tests basic system design and ML thinking. Can you architect a very basic large scale solution? I actually got this question during an interview at an AI startup. And what they really care about is your ability to break down the problem, not just name algorithms. In fact, one of my students that got into a major AI startup nailed his interview by starting with the basics for this question instead of jumping to deep learning. Here's my recommended high level answer. First, set up a baseline, like matrix factorization or nearest neighbors. After that, scale up using embeddings, eventually moving to a deep learning approach. In your answer, make sure to emphasize that you should cache popular recommendations. And of course, you'll be serving via an API with latency constraints in mind. Of course, make sure you mention that it depends on if you're looking at a cold start or a warm start. And also be sure to communicate that you understand the difference between offline training and real-time serving. And of course, don't just say, I'll use the k-means algorithm. This question tests if you understand modern NLP or natural language processing. One of my students was asked this exact same question after mentioning that they'd worked with transformers. The key is explaining it clearly, not just naming equations. Hiring managers want to know that you can reason about these models at a high level. Here's my recommended high level answer. At its core, attention allows the model to weigh different input tokens dynamically for each each output token generated. Attention scores are computed, which are simply dot products between queries and keys. We then apply softmax and then a weighted sum over the values. Ultimately, this lets the model focus on relevant parts of the input. Disclaimer, there is a lot more nuance here, like multi-headed attention, masking, scaling, but this is just the start of a high level answer. And don't just say, it's like an RNN, but faster. This question tests if you understand model generalization. This was actually the first theory question that one of my students was ever asked at a time when he thought that code was the only thing that mattered. Huge mistake. Here's my recommended high level answer. Bias is tied to underfitting. We can have error due to assumptions in the model. Variance is tied to overfitting. At inference time, there can be errors due to sensitivity from fluctuations in the training data. Ultimately, we have to find the best balance for generalization. And of course, don't just say you want low bias and low variance at the same time, because theoretically that's impossible. Companies ask this question because they want people who can ship models that actually generalize. At a fintech interview, one of my students was grilled on this question because the company's models kept breaking in production. Here's my recommended high-level answer. Detection is easy. There will be a gap between training performance and testing performance, and cross-validation can tell us a lot as well. And there are many ways to handle overfitting. Regularization, dropout, larger datasets, simpler models, 
works. Early stopping, the list goes on. Make sure to mention the importance of monitoring the validation performance in your answer. This question tests your ability to match model choice to data characteristics. One of my students was asked this question in his Amazon interview when he kept defaulting to logistic regression. They wanted him to think deeper about a different data structure. Here's my recommended high-level answer. Decision trees can be a solid choice when we have nonlinear data or a ton of categorical variables. Logistic regression is obviously great for classification and interpretability. And of course, don't just say that one is always better than the other because we know that's not true. This question matters because it tests your debugging mindset, not just your coding skills. In fact, this question has been asked to almost every AI engineer at some point. Most people jump to changing the model, but the real issue is data leakage. Here's my recommended high-level answer. Check the data splits, check data quality, check for overfitting and underfitting, and, and of course, make sure the evaluation metric actually matches the problem we're trying to solve. You should also be sure to mention checking the data pipeline as there could be issues there. Just don't jump to changing the model or the model architecture. This question matters because real-world deployment will be full of hidden traps that you just won't find in a Colab notebook. Many models work offline but fail in the real world because their features are stale. Here's my recommended high-level answer. First, consider data drift or some kind of mismatch between training data and live data. See if features need to be updated or if they're being updated incorrectly. Make sure to emphasize that a mismatch between training data and live data is actually super common. And don't just say, it's it's probably some bug in the code. This question matters because performance is going to impact user experience and cost. Here's my recommended high-level answer. First, take a look at the inference pipeline. What's the bottleneck? Consider techniques like quantization, model pruning, distillation. Consider caching frequent predictions, or even batch them if possible. The goal in your answer is to emphasize that you understand that inference is a critical part of developing a model. It's not just an afterthought. And of course, don't you say something like, use a faster GPU. This question matters because it shows that you can own a model even after training is complete. At almost every company, they will push on this question because models don't end at deployment. Here's my recommended high-level answer. Of course, set up logging and dashboards for key metrics, accuracy-based metrics, latency-based metrics, data drift, and so on. Alerts or even retraining could be triggered if thresholds are crossed. And of course, we want to periodically reevaluate with fresh labels. Emphasize your understanding that models monitoring and even a retraining plan is critical for production models. Don't just say, deploy and forget it, it'll keep working. Now, if you'd like guidance from me, landing your dream offer in AI engineering, click the link in the description. We've helped thousands of people land their dream offer in AI engineering. And if you're looking for another video to watch on how to optimize your portfolio so you can get as many interviews and offers as possible, check out this video, you don't want to miss it, and I'll see you soon.